So, hello. I'm going to take us through something that I used to teach my students many years ago. Um, and uh, I consider this to be incredibly useful. And it's something that I created. Um, I call it the normalised tunable sigmoid function. And um, I created it in the sense that I developed the mathematical formula and I use this in any kind of game development that I do for a whole number of purposes. And um, so what I'll do is I will cover uh, what a sigmoid is and why I made my own version because you can look them up. You look for sigmoid functions you'll see them. Uh, I'm not going to cover the official ones because you can go and look at that uh, material for, for that. Uh, no, this is my one. And um, one should not be shy about looking to create one's own stuff. And, you know, you can do that for sure. That is really annoying, actually. You know what's happened here. I've got this app for switching the scene on my phone. And just then, at the moment I was doing it, up popped a little tweet from somebody saying someone was a disgrace, but never mind. Um, is this working? Look at that. I can draw in front of me. So um, I'm a less of a distraction this way. So what a sigmoid function is, is basically something that does some kind of shape that looks vaguely like an S. <laughs> okay. If you see what I mean. That's a way to kind of remember that. They're, they're, they're useful. They're useful because it's a non-linear relationship that you've got here. You know, look, that straight line relationship is your standard relationship that you get everywhere. Um, it's called linear. But if you want to make something that sort of curves for some reason, you can you look at sigmoids. But one thing that's uh, an issue with your standard sigmoids you can go and look at is it, they have functions like e to the x. Uh, e, e is a value of about 2.717, I think. It's um, a very interesting mathematical value. Uh, it's basically a function, exponential function, creating an exponential curve where for an input of 1, that's if x is 1, uh, the slope at that point is 1. And so the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. It turns out that once you have that function, which is lit, it turns out to be just the power of a, an irrational number, it's very useful in mathematics all over the place. And you can use it to generate sigmoids. You will see that the, and the inverse of this, the, the logarithms. And thing is, that function, which, you know, when you are programming in your favourite language, might be represented as exp, for example, x comma 2.7. Well, actually, uh, that would be a power, wouldn't it? So if you just put exp x, the exponential function, it's calculating e to the x, which is interesting in itself, isn't it? Because you you go and do that function because someone told you to, and maybe you don't know that it's literally just e, a constant to a power. Uh, the thing is that this is very um, expensive, really. It's at least traditionally less so these days, maybe, uh, in comparison. But let's say um, it's still a floating point uh, function that 
takes effort to calculate and uh, no matter what anybody says if you can avoid floating points you're probably going to be doing things faster you know I, I still I, I came grew up you know 40 years ago from a, a time when even doing division was something that you wanted to avoid but anyway the point is this is this is what you've got and the other thing that you'll see if you look at, uh, at the, those sigmoids is they aren't really very flexible. It's like you might get something like this and then maybe you can sort of squish it in this axis a bit or move it this way or move it that way by changing what your, your, your function is. But you can't really change the shape really easily. And I wanted something that you could do that for and I'm going to give an example of the use case because it is a very good use case for this which is very relevant to anybody making a video game which is why sometimes despite protestations I taught it. So what you have if you imagine this horizontal line that you can see here this represents a joystick. Oh, I, Got a mirrored image here this makes it a bit difficult right and you can move the joystick this way or move it that way and when you do the camera rotates which is funnily enough exactly what's happening here um, this might be good for a first person shooter I've got a cross on my face now right? for a first person shooter right because you push left and right on a thumbstick and that means rotate the character around okay fair enough now you might say this is pretty trivial um, you know it's like I don't want to cross in front of my face anymore <laughs> you might say so what we're going to do something we're going to take a number between minus one and one which is the stick all the way to the left or all the way to the right and we'll just multiply it by something Anyway, we'll call that x and then maybe we want it to turn say five degrees per second x times five I've got x point five that's because I'm thinking being a mathematician there multiply it by five and, 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 and what do you get you get a linear relationship Now there are people, sometimes veterans, who will say, I've been working, making video games for 30 years. I never really needed to use maths. And if you ever hear anybody say that, I take it with a pinch of salt. Because there's maths right here. It's very difficult to really see how you can say you haven't used maths. The thing is, like with many things in video game development, this looks trivial. It looks like there's not much to dive into here. But in fact, just the topic of how to get a good rotation in a game from a stick moving left and right is actually qu quite a bit of a rabbit hole. At least, maybe not the hugest of rabbit holes but it's certainly deeper than you expected I mean you'd be walking along and you'll put your foot in it and found yourself flat on your face if you're not careful it's enough of a, a rabbit hole uh, for that um, so I tell you what let me just take that off a moment because I'm going to th talk about now the, the fact that we have an input value and I'm, I'm going to call that uh, x, wasn't it? I'll say it's x, which has a range of 1 to 1. It's the range of x, which is a mathematical expression. It's actually a term, it's a, the range of something. So we are using maths in games development. Right. And then we're going to have the rotation rate which I'm just going to call r is equal some constant c multiplied by x more math but you know in the case that I showed before c was a value 
of 5. Is this good enough? All right, minus 1 to 1, and down here, minus 5 degrees per second to plus 5 degrees per second. How, how sort of fast is 5 degrees per second? Okay, so a first person shooter, I'm just imagining I'm aiming, you know, that's it, this direction, 5 degrees per second. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be killed many times over in the time it takes for me to turn around. Now, how quickly can a human being turn around? You'll be quite surprised how long it takes to turn around. I mean, quarter of a second? Less? So, I think we need to be able... We need to tune this to be something else. I'm going to, uh, and to have some idea of this, we might want to use maths. So um, let's see. Mm. Let's, let's use some maths. So I want to be able to turn around in 200 milliseconds. Now, 200 milliseconds doesn't seem like much. It's two tenths of a second. There are some people who will tell you that the human perception is incapable of seeing anything faster than one tenth of a second. If you ever hear anybody saying that, take it with a pinch of salt, because a hundred milliseconds is an eternity in the <laughs> appropriate context. If you are making a user interface, the difference between a button responding immediately and a button responding 100 milliseconds later is actually quite huge. If you are making Pong, And you have the old-fashioned type of controller, which we don't have anymore, which is basically... Well, I suppose you can do it with the mouse, right? So you move the mouse up and down, and you tie the bat directly to your mouse. So it goes up and down. Build that game and put a 100 millisecond delay uh, between the mouse movement and the paddle, and you won't be able to play it. It'll be impossible to play. The lag at 100 milliseconds is too much. Uh, just point out something is you have to be careful when you're working on modern hardware. And I was working on Kickoff Revival. I almost died, metaphorically speaking, when I found out that the delay I had from any input that I made through the engine, which was Unity, on the PS4 to appear on the screen, I measured it. It was 100 milliseconds. I had to do some serious work to get that down. I got it down to about 50 milliseconds. That's another, that's a story for another day. Um, sometimes I wonder how many people would ever go to that extent or even know that it's 100 milliseconds. But that's, is this, is this is a hobby, hobby horse uh, that, uh, of mine, uh, low latency stuff. But anyway, 200 milliseconds we are here, which would be two frames if you're running at 10 frames per second to turn around 180 degrees. So I think then we would have 180 degrees that we need to be able to turn in 200 milliseconds. 200 milliseconds is 0 0.2 seconds. So um, in order to turn 180 degrees in 0.2 seconds, what do we need to do? We need to figure out how many degrees to rotate per second. Um, so, well, you can see it's multiplied by five, can't you? Okay, so we're talking about a fifth of a second. So you go 180 degrees. So if you're able to keep spinning, you would go around like two and a half times in a second. Um, 
probably most people fall over if they were to try to do that. But um, anyway, 0.2 seconds, one way you say multiply by five. The other thing where you can say you take that 180, you divide it by the time, divide it by 0.2. That's the same thing as multiplying it by five. And that's 900. Because you can multiply it by 10, you get 800 divided by 2. Multiply by 10 divided by 2, same as multiply by 5. 900. Yeah, we're doing math for video game development. Oh, right. So 900 degrees per second. That's quite a bit more than where we started off at 5. So let's go back. And, um, you know, we will, we will give that a go. What was the value? I've forgotten now. <laughs> oh, you can't. That's another hobby horse of mine. It's like, it is where you, you have a limited sort of undo and redo. I mean, come on, it's 19, it's not 1992 anymore. It was 900 anyway. Right. And so. We need, we need to go from minus one to one input, input value, right? This is not a joystick in two directions or a thumbstick in two directions here. We're only concerned with the x-axis at the moment. And the x-axis here is the amount of stick. And the um, vertical one is the number of degrees per second. OK, so we want 900. <laughs> so this has to be 900 here and this is minus 900. So, OK, and then uh, presumably we want to have here a nice uh, linear relationship between them because that's what we do, you see, because we we always think linearly. That's where you multiply two things together. You're going to get a linear relationship. And um, all's good, except it isn't, because right here in the centre, you're going to have an issue. It's like you want to be able to spin around quickly, but you want to be able to aim. You want to have precision in the middle. Ah, what you do? Because, you know, I, I don't know, let's see what this actually means in terms of to give some kind of sense about of the precision that we're talking about here. Right. Let's say that we move the stick 0.1 either way, you know, so in here, just zoom in, we say 0.1. If I zoom in, then I don't know where I am anymore. <laughs> so let's just put in here. Let me change the colour, maybe. We'll put blue. And I'll put some blue marks here at point one. OK. Now, we know that vertically it goes from 0 to 900. So at point one, we know this point here, we're talking about 90 degrees per second. Does that make sense? 90 degrees per second. So how, um, how much is 90 degrees per second? I don't know. Yeah. 90 degrees per second. I mean, I'm, f I'm facing this way. And if I do 90 degrees per second, then it's like this from here. One, two, three for it's something like this. So just imagine that you are moving that stick 0.1, one tenth of the way. And I'm not even talking yet about dead zones. Uh, dead zones, they're a nightmare, but I'm going to ignore dead zones for now. Let's imagine there's no dead zone. So, you know, we just push the stick 10% one way and suddenly it's 
one, two, this, Now that might not look much, but now you have to imagine that your camera is tied to that, your aiming is tied to that, and that the thing that you're trying to aim at, which could be like, I don't know, 20 meters in front of you, is gonna be whizzing past like this. So you won't have any precision for what you're gonna do. There are many possible solutions. And there's only one that really works. And I'm going to show you, the, in my opinion, I will show you the one that works. All right? Because you might want to, well, here's one possible solution. You, you, what you do is that you give the, um, the game player, the customer, you give the customer the choice, don't you? You could say, ah, that value K, remember we're doing the amount of rotation, which was R, and we're going to use internally, obviously the customer is not aware of this magic. You hope that the developers were aware of the magic, but that's another story. Um, so <laughs> we've got that multiplied by some constant K, multiplied by the input value, which I, I called it X. And K is set to 900 at the moment. So what you can do is give the customer the option of changing that value K. Uh, if you change it, you could say, you know, all right, you want some precision in the middle? You know, 90 degrees per second rotation is a bit, you know, sort of too fast for you. We'll, we'll give you the option. In fact, you know what? We will we will put that in the user interface thing, you know. Oh, sorry. <coughs> All this. <laughs> I'm crouching like this. It's like ever so humble, Master Copperfield. But, uh, anyway. Right. Um, so, so what you do is you imagine, right, that you're going to give this option and the player can um, choose that amount that they of accuracy that they want at the center, they could choose that. So instead of it being, you know, 90, they might choose to make it 45. <laughs> 45 is probably not going to do the trick. It's still pretty fast, isn't it? So maybe you want to give a good range and bring it down to 10. 10 might be reasonable. All right, so if we were to, to do that, then I guess, yeah, change color again. We'll take a cyan nine. What we'll do is, uh, well, from 900 degrees down to 10 degrees. Um, t t oh, no, 90 down to 10. Sorry, not 900. 90 down to 10. You want to put one tenth approximately, one ninth or whatever. It's approximately one tenth, right? So I guess that would be the equivalent of something like this. And now they're happy because in the center they have the precision that they want, but they're going to be miserable because now it takes 10 times longer to turn around. I'm going to round it up to 10, 10 times longer. So instead of turning around in 200 milliseconds, it's going to be more like this. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> what do you do? Um, of course, one thing you could do is say, we are going to have two curves. Actually, it's two lines. This is a terrible solution. Awful. Why? <laughs> because of right here and here, you have discontinuities. Your aiming along this line is going to be quite 
good, but push your stick a little bit too far and suddenly without any sort of feedback or warning you're going to get a vastly increased speed and in fact the angle is going to be steeper than the angle would have been through the linear line. I hope you see that. The point is, is you don't know at what point when you push the stick it's going to flip from one to the other. Discontinuities like this are a really bad idea. You do see them. I've seen them in video games. And they're a really bad idea and unnecessary because with a little bit of math you can come up with better solutions. Um, what you really want, and this is where the function comes in, the sigmoid, is you want to fix those two endpoints. This endpoint here and that endpoint here need to be fixed. You want <laughs> both of these. It's actually quite difficult to do that because it's like a reverse mirror. But um, yeah, both of these, you want them to be fixed. And what you want to do is change the angle in the center. And this is the way to solve the problem. And it wasn't for this particular use case that I, div I was looking originally for this sigmoid function. It wasn't this particular use case. It was a different one. It was, it was to do with um, controlling how hard a football player would kick a ball dependent on their speed and I wasn't getting good results with linear relationships so I wanted a curve but it turned out that this had a lot of different applications and this one is a more I'm explaining this one because it's a more sort of readily useful obviously useful one so you can see that if you want to do that you 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 want to have the angle in the center locked or adjustable right but the two points at the end, here and here, are fixed, you have no choice. You need some kind of curve. And there you are, it's a sigmoid, sort of S-shaped curve. And that is what I'm going to cover here. <laughs>